Welcome back to another Baker Dave Presents. I am Baker Dave, and we're here in Morgan Hall's kitchen with a very special guest, Tony Luke Jr., restaurateur. He's going to be here to show us his Grandma Fucci's antipasta recipe. Can't wait. I have a very special guest today, Tony Luke Jr. Thanks, hey. man. I really appreciate you coming down and helping me out here. Thank you. So, hey. uh, what do you got for me? You know, when I was a kid, my grandmother, my father's mother, right? Her name was Fucci. She used Fucci. to make this anti pasta. Very yeah, well, <laughs> she used to make this anti pasta, and this was what I believed was anti pasta from a childhood into my teens. And it has a lot of ingredients. Now, this dish is usually done for Christmas. Okay. Uh, or any special I, holiday. I love the way, like Italians do that a lot. They have like dishes. This is a Christmas. This is it. Christmas well, this is it. All, you, you know what I mean? And then you come Christmas. back another time. You could you know? get it at a, at, at a special event or a special birthday because it's a lot of work and it has to marinate has basically to marinate overnight. So, yeah. And there's a lot of different ingredients, as you can see. I mean, there's sure. a ton of them. This but, is nothing like... When I, like I've been to restaurants and ordered any pasta. It never has these ingredients. Like, I don't know what this is. Well, this I, is like a whole lot of... Not what I think of when I, no. I mean, I'm not Italian. Well, there's no, but no, but, but it doesn't, even in Italian, I've been to Italian restaurants. I remember when I was a kid, the first time I went into a restaurant and ordered antipasto, I walk in, I see it on the menu, I'm like, oh my God, it's antipasto. I love this antipasto. I can't wait. I order it, the uh, waiter brings it to me, and I go, what's this? And he goes, <laughs> it's antipasto. I'm like, no, this is a salad. You have a salad with some meat on top of it. This is not, you know, right. no, this is antipasto. And then it wasn't until later, much, much later, when I would go to people's homes and other Italian homes and, and, and ask for any pasto, and ne never, ever came out like this. I realized that we were probably the only family eating any pasta here, in, like this. Here, right? Right. So I felt it my duty to keep this alive. So I, I want to show you people how to make this. This is definitely one of those dishes where you're either going to love it. <laughs> or you're not going to love it. So there's no middle there's of the no road. There's no in between, right? But I, I think it's important uh, for my grandmom and her memory to always keep this recipe going. So uh, I'm so happy and I is can't she, wait to share it with you. Does she come straight? Like, is she from she's Italy? From Italy like, yes. I mean, that was, she was the first one to come over here? Is yeah, that the deal? she was from Italy, yes. So this is, this is straight back to your Italian roots. I here. guess only her family, though, because no one else in that country ever made it I mean, it but like you've been to Italy. Maybe other not. people make it there. I have Maybe it's just Italy. here. Right. Maybe I, it's, a, it's a stupid American thing that we don't know what to in a pasta I, is, you I, know? I completely agree. But I, this is actually, absolutely one of my favorites. Awesome. I can't wait to dig in. So Are we're, you going to help me? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Right, here's you know I'm a baker, right? I mean, I, so well, it's, yeah, but you can, hopefully it's no, nothing see, too I involved. Right? I can't bake at all. All right, well, at all. Then, then we'll come back another time. You'll have to bake with me, right? That's a science. <laughs> I can't. I, you know, I throw this, this, baker, and everything's measuring. This is the basis of... What, now, what is, what is that? Cause I, well, some people call it uh, gardenia salad, jardinet. I call it jardinet. Okay. And what it is is, is vinegar and pickled cauliflower, celery, carrots... Okay. Um, and this is the base uh, flavor for this antipasto. But now if you put it in like this, it's way too big. So what I tell people is get a cutting board. Okay. Like I'm doing right here. Okay, because you don't want giant pieces. The, the thing about this is you want everything small. So if you use a spoon or a fork, you're getting a you're little getting bit a little of everything. everything. Right. right. So when you chop it, I mean, you're just doing basic chopping. You just want to chop it up. And again, you don't have to be an expert at chopping. You're not looking That's, for you know, perfect parent, I mean, yeah. cuts. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to have perfect cuts. You just basically want to chop it, it up a little, little bit. You want to break it up, right? See the big cauliflower? You definitely want to. Nobody wants a whole piece of cauliflower. Well, I love cauliflower, well, but I'm I don't want it in this antipasto. Okay. So now, once we cut this down, and basically, that's really all you need. Okay. That's we're pretty gonna, easy. We're going to take it, put it right back in the bowl. So this is this is kind of like. Uh, I know uh, any pasta is, is the start of your meal, right? This is like your appetite. This is like in, in a traditional Italian feast, right? You would start with an any pasta. With an any pasta, right? This is your. This appetizer. is like your appetizer, right? Right. And then yeah, you would you would work from there. I unfortunately always eat it like a main course because sometimes I could be a gavon. Right. But um, so here's your base. Now, in, 
anything sitting on this table right now does not have to go in in any particular order. Well, that's good. Doesn't matter. You can't screw that up. No. These are uh, sweet gherkin pickles. Okay. Now, you see it with like caviar and stuff a lot of times. Right. And right. you have that sweetness, which really goes well with the, uh, the vinegar the flavor vinegar, from right. the jar. Now, normally, the, the uh, sizing will be um, on your TV screen. <laughs> I do everything by feel and look. And, and to me, yeah, to me that, that's enough. Right. Okay. Now, black olives. I don't want to put them in whole. And if you've ever chopped black olives, you realize that right? it's horrible. So all I do is this. <laughs> Plus that's you get, the you you get that juice in right. there. That's it's all like, you I have mean... to do is just bust the olives like that. I will do the exact same thing with Now do you the... have to use the ones with the pimentos in it? Like, yeah. it seems like you've got, the, you've got the other, it seems like pimentos here a few times. Do you know why you have to use no, it? No, that's why I'm asking. Because that's what she used and that's oh, what we're bad. using. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how it is, right? There is no rhyme or reason. Grandmother did this, this She what you did do. it and that's what we're going to do. Now we'll do a couple more of these, okay? How do they get them things in there, man? I don't know. That's one <laughs> job I wouldn't want. Right? Okay, so now we have this just in. Just... As you can see, it's starting to really come together now, and all of these flavors will start marinating. Now we have, what do we want to do next? Let's uh, do the tuna next. Now, you're going to have tuna in oil. Not you the water stuff. We're not, not trying, the... we're not going light on this. No, we're not losing weight here no. by any stretch of the imagination. But you don't want water, and you do not want to drain this oil. Well, no, you want, you don't that want to oil that flavor, goes right? in. You want that oil flavor, that fish flavor, all of that goes in. See, empty, no oil. No oil. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a spoon for now because I want to bust this up a little bit. Now you have the vinegar, you have the tuna, the tuna oil that it's sitting in, which you prefer to get. You definitely want to get tuna in olive oil. Not in canola oil. You want it in olive oil. I, I hate to say this, but as you know, a stupid American, I really feel like I'm looking at this, mm -hmm. and I just want to put some mayonnaise in it or something. You know what I mean? I know. Like I'm, I'm looking at like it's a sat, like it's a summertime salad. Like yeah. I want to, you know. No, I'm going to absolutely forget that you said that entire. Oh, uh, that's good. Hey, you want to no, put we didn't mayo. get that right. That, didn't, that wasn't on tape, right? <laughs> no mayo. Okay. What do I know? This. Mm, love these sardines. Okay. Now again, you're not going to put the sardines in whole. You're just going to break them up because you want, see it almost like the tuna, and you want that flavor, and all of the oil of the sardines will go in here also. I need to just wipe my hands for a minute. So um, they're not so fishy? Yeah, so I'm not so fishy. <laughs> now again, notice every time I add an ingredient, I mix it. Well, because you want them evenly I want distributed. Them, right, exactly. See, who said you're not a chef? What are you talking about? What do I know? It's all good. All right, now, next thing I want to put in is all, More fish? all of the oil of the alige, of the anchovies. Of the what? Alige, anchovies. Oh, that's Italian? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. You just said it? Alige. That's what <laughs> I called them from when I was a kid. Ali. All right. I never even knew what anchovies were. It was always alige. Uh, now you're going to take this, the uh, roasted peppers. You want the roasted peppers in oil, and you want the one with garlic in it because the garlic adds a nice little extra flavor to it. But what you don't want to do is do too much of the green pepper. I put a little bit of the juice, not much, inside there, and then we're gonna stir. I mean, one, one thing I'd like to point out about this is, and I've noticed this, all of these ingredients in here have been stewing, like if, if you were, and this is why this is such a, a long process, and we obviously didn't do all of this, but these red peppers, they're, they're in oil for, you know, oh, wheat, yeah, they're right? I mean, oh, like they're, they're marinated yeah. good in oil. These, these are, everything has been building its flavor separately and then you're putting it together, and then you still would want to wait a day or two to really build the flavors up at that point, am I right? Yeah, it, it's very good as it is, right. but what you want to do is you want to cover this and refrigerate this for at least 24 hours, because the flavors are great now, but tomorrow, like the following day, they all day, marry together, they're all married they're together like, and that flavor that I'm showing you. They're dancing around in there. Yeah, but it, most of the time, though, my grandmother would, would make it, she'd wrap it, she'd put it in, and then she'd take it out the next day, and like a quarter of it was gone because right. I snuck in at night and Somebody ate, did, ate right. a quarter of that. Yeah, I, couldn't, I could not wait. Okay, now we're going to take a little olive oil because there's not enough fat in here. Is there ever enough fat? No, there is never enough fat. Now, once we distribute the olive oil, we're going to take half of our anchovies. You have to chop them up. And we're going to chop them up. Okay? Because I want anchovies inside 
the bites that you're taking when you're eating it. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with that. We're gonna mix this real good. So now notice all the flavors you have in here. I'm smelling it. I There's mean, it's, a lot. I can't. There's a lot. Now, if you wanna substitute fresh garlic for garlic powder, I have no problem with that at all. The only problem is the garlic, pow garlic powder and granulated garlic have a different flavor than just fresh garlic. So I think it would change the flavor. I would feel like something was missing. Right. So, you know, and what you're going to do with this is the same thing. You're just, all you're doing is you're seasoning it. I wouldn't go more than that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, and then we're going to toss that around. And then the last ingredient that we're going to put in is our cheese. Ah, the good stuff. Right. So you want to get some, uh, some really nice uh, provolone cheese. Uh, preferably sharp provolone cheese. Because you uh, want some flavor in there. Exactly. And then what we're going to do is, I'm going to cut some of this edge off because we don't want that. Okay. Now you're going to cut it in strips like this. And then we're going to take these strips and we're just going to cut them down. Because again, we want things to be bite sized. Right. That's what you want. Now, does the next day when you come in, how does the uh, oils and stuff affect the cheese? Does it get kind of... No. It stays, because it's a hearty cheese. So, yeah, I mean, no, I've never stays, actually used... No, it, it stays beautiful. It stays good. Yeah. Oh, good. Stays That's probably really... why you wouldn't want to use like a cheddar or something. No, <laughs> I would not. No, and it's going to change the whole... Your whole family's going to hate me after this show, right? <laughs> they will not. Are you kidding me? All right. How dare he? So now what you want to do is, now that, this is done. I mean, it's, it's a lot of ingredients, but it's basically a very simple dish. Right, no. You know, and, and I love working with flavors, and I don't mask flavors too much. I think that food in general is, is very flavorful, and it's just being able to marry certain foods together that really go well. Now what you want to do is you're going to take your serving plate. Do you want to work on the other side of it? or? Yeah. And this is your salami. Now, you can either salami you want to use is fine. You can get the lunch meat salami, which is very, very large, okay. or the smaller. It, it, either way, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. It's not going to affect at all. But what you want to do is you want to take the salami. Now you're going to make it pretty. And you want to plate it. Because what you're trying to do on the bigger salami, uh -huh. you would take a spatula, go under the salami, and then that's your portion. Oh, okay. So whatever's on I top of what the salami, saying. that's that's one portion. With that's why you want the bigger salami, so you get a bigger portion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I see. Now it's all... Well, I'll just get a few of these. Then. It's all it making matter. sense. So you want to cover the plate completely, like I'm doing here. Um, then also, the very last thing you do, once the plate is covered, is you'll take same thing as we did with the oh, cheese. Oh, back to chopping. Okay. As we did with the cheese, we're going to take the salami, and we're going to do just a rough cut. Okay. So it's not just a garnish, it's also, right. it's, it's also, in there. Yeah, you want that flavor in there. So, now, I'm doing this with a spoon. How I dare cannot you. recommend <laughs> more that you do this with your hands. You have to really, really mix these ingredients together. Now, you can do it with a spoon like I'm doing, but it's going to take you a lot longer. So, and, you know, my grandmother never used a spoon. I, you know, she just... You got right in there. When I was a kid, it was great learning how to make this because... So there's no spoons to lick off afterwards, you know, no. from a baking standpoint. From a know. baking standpoint, <laughs> no. Okay, so now all you do is very simple. You take it, and you pile it right on top. And then we have one last thing we're going to do. Okay. We're going to pile this right on top. So now you notice, in each spoonful, you have the Everything. pickles, you have... The olives, you have everything in here. And it makes a really nice presentation because you want to show the... Okay, and then what we're going to do last is we're going to take the anchovies that we didn't cut and we're going to layer them right across the top. Is I going to write my name in it or something? You could. <laughs> Dave is four Dave letters. And, you might yeah, be able to totally do it. Yeah, with the anchovies, right? Yeah, we can't do Dave and Tony. Tony no. won't fit. Tony's small too, though. Yeah, but that's eight letters now. There you go. And then, if you want, you're gonna take a little. It bit looks of, like the skate, like the skeleton of, of a fish. fish. Is that what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, you want to try. Oh, that's see? pretty cool. <laughs> okay. 
So then I thought you were just randomly doing that. There's always a method. Always to my a method. Madness. My bad. Okay, and then all you're gonna do is take a little bit of fresh parsley, just for color. Throw it on top, and then this is Grandma Fucci's antipasto. Beautiful. And again, like, and, and one of the things I love about the idea of the antipasta, uh, and it goes with that Italian mentality. I hate to say this, <laughs> but it's not an hors d'oeuvre that you can walk around with. You're sitting down, you're, 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 yeah. you're, you're at the dinner table, you're having conversation, it's like a whole event, you know what I mean? And this, is, this signifies the start of that event. Well, I mean, the, the one thing, uh, you know, I, I've always said over and over again that I don't care what your background is, uh, what your views are on anything, when you sit down at a table to eat, everyone drops the wall. Yeah. The wall comes down and Absolutely. people just enjoy the food. In fact, I think the, the most progress you make as a family or even with friends or strangers is eating with them because you drop that wall and people will just be themselves. They won't try to be oh, something yeah. that that's they're the beauty, not. That's the beauty of food. And you, let's see if you did a good job here. Let's see what we're All going right, for. All right, let's see. How do I make sure you sure get everything right? And the, and the fish. Mm. Wow. It's very good. It's very different. Love it, hate it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not, I've never eaten anything like this. It's nothing like I expected. It's very, it's delicious. It's, a, it's, it's absolutely fishy. I mean, it is fishy from the tuna and the sardines and, and the uh, anchovies. But now when that sits, wow. The flavor, then, then you don't get the separate fishy flavors. You get, no, because what you're getting now too is it'll tend salty. to be a little salty. Mm -hmm. When that's that sits, a that'll dissipate because it'll start getting, that salt will start getting into everything that's in there. And that's, it'll level it out more. And like I said, when you do it at home. You're going to make sure you get you're a piece of get, that, right? Right. So that normally would be what right. you're eating. Fantastic. Because that, that uh, salami does really well with that. Again, thanks for stopping by. Man. This <laughs> is fantastic. I I'm, appreciate I'm definitely it. making this one again. Well, I really appreciate it. And I thank you for the opportunity to... Uh, Spread grandma's antipast to... Uh, maybe, maybe you can change the world. To the rest Everybody of the world. will realize what antipasta is supposed to be. This is real antipasto. Throw away the other stuff. Right? This is what you need to make. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank Tony Luke Jr. for joining us today and sharing his grandmother's recipe and his stories. Join us next time for Baker Dave Presents. And remember, every recipe has a story.